Calling all cars in the Hollywood District. Calling all cars in the Hollywood District. Proceed to Sunset Strip. Looks like another fake auto crash. Bring in Nita Madera. They're involved in the accident. Calling all cars in the Hollywood District. Calling all cars in the Hollywood District. Why do you want to take the rap? You will, unless you get wise and put the blame where it really belongs. Now, who was the man who tried to blackmail Doris Shaw? I don't know. We just met them tonight. Where did he go? Where can we find him? I don't know. Now, tell me this. Who's collecting in this racket? Who's the head man? I don't know him. Then there is somebody. No, 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 I don't know. Stop questioning me. All right, Nita. Think it over. You can get out of this jam if you want. But it's up to you. Hello, Tom. Hello, Lou. Well? Nothing yet, but I think I'll break this one quick. I hope you're right about that quick. Say, do you realize you're making business interfere with my pleasure? I told Kathy I'd be right back. Poor kid. With a flat foot like me for a father and a flat head like you for a boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Sergeant. Glad to see you looking so well. I suppose Meat is one of your clients too, eh, Stoffer? You detectives have remarkable powers of deduction. There you are. The Habris Corpus for the release of Nita Madera. Lou, I should have joined the fire department. Stop for tonight. I don't think we'll find anything to interest us here. Hello, Tom. Hello. Come on over. <laughs> well, what are you doing here? Well, I guess there's no sense in asking you what you're doing here. <laughs> I want you to meet uh, Oliver Holton, Browning's special investigator. This is Lou Fleming of the Globe Bulletin. How are you, Lou? Oh, one of Browning's Boy Scouts, huh? Yes, sir. My good deed for today is putting up with newspaper mugs. All right, sit down. Sit down, Tom. Thanks. All right, boys, what is it? Come on, come on, give me a break on the story. There is no story yet, Lou. Maybe there won't be one. Oh, well, cops haven't liked me since I was a kid. How about you, Counselor? You'll help out a poor, struggling member of the Fourth Estate, won't you? Oh, no. I told you, I've already done my good deed for the day. Oh, she. Why, uh, that's uh, for Kathy Lenore, one of the entertainers. You mean she's a singer here? Yeah. Well, there's uh, sort of a rhythm in what she does, but I wouldn't call it singing. Oh. What's the matter? Disillusion? No, just not interested. <laughs> Hello, Kathy. Kathy, I'd like to present a couple of friends of mine. Mr. Holden. How do you how do? do? And uh, Mr. O'Connor. Well, how do you do? Gentlemen, my favorite nightclub dancer, Miss Kathy Lenore. Well, uh, well, sit down, please. Won't you join us? Oh, certainly. Kathy, uh, Mr. Holden has a little prejudice against nightclub entertainers. I just thought you'd like to know. Well, uh, just what do you find wrong with us, Mr. Uh, Mr. Holstein? Uh, Mr. Holden, dear. Holden. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Holton. Well, now, Mr. Holton, I'm dying to hear just why you don't like nightclub performers. Well, perhaps it's because of the uh, company they keep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can still go for them. Can I tempt you with a big apple, Kathy? Oh, I'll take a small slice. Come on, get out of here. <laughs> Funny how these nightclub entertainers think they always have to be acting. On and off. Oh, I don't know, Fulton. I think she looks like she comes from a very good family. Oh, you're a great detective, Tom, but... Lou's right. You just don't like it. Why don't I go to Nita's apartment? She might talk to me. I've been pretty decent to her. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, go ahead. Well, so long. Oh, do you have to go? Dad, 
<laughs> I told you she looked like a girl that came from a good family. <laughs> now, the minute you're through working, I want you to come right home, young lady. I always do. Don't I, Luke? Sure you do. <laughs> good night, darling. Good night. Good night. So long, Tom. <laughs> There's not much for me to say. <laughs> uh, you said quite a lot already. Say, that reminds me. I've got to see a man about a story. I'll pick you up later, Kathy. All uh, right, darling, I'll wait for you. So long, Holden. So long, Lou. I'd have known that you were Tom's daughter, I... Yes, I know. You would have kept your opinions to yourself. I'm sure you'd have done that at least. Could I order a drink for you? No, thank you. I'm afraid I must be getting ready for my number. Yes, of course. Good night, Mr. Holton. Good night, Miss uh, O'Connor. Hello, Barney. Make yourselves comfortable. Say, it was swell of Babsy to stick by me and get me away from the cops. Babsy always takes good care of his friends. Well, I guess I'd better call him and thank him. Skip it, Nita. He doesn't expect to talk to you. That's why he sent us. Well, have a seat and I'll make you up a drink. Never mind. We won't be staying long. Bad he heard you were going to talk, Nita. Well, he knows I wouldn't talk. I suppose he thought he'd rather have you talk to us than the coppers. Why, I wouldn't talk. I'll call him right now. Anyway, we came here to make sure. Well, I'm glad you did. 
I can swear to you boys I didn't say a thing. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Eddie, Eddie, what are you doing? Eddie! Come out. Come on, beat it. Give me the night desk. Hello, Jake. This is Fleming. Hold a spot. Tom O'Connor, detective attached to Browning Special Prosecutor's Office, has just rubbed out Nita Madera's apartment. Right. Now hold everything. I'll call you right back. Police headquarters. Give me the homicide squad. I didn't expect to see you again. Late enough for two. Kathy, I... Oh, so it's Kathy now. Please. Something happened. Happened? Where's Dad? He... following a lead on the Nita Madera case. Went to her apartment. They were both found. Shot. Who did it? We don't know yet. <laughs> Kathy, I... I'll answer it. Hello, Rosie. Taking it. Pretty tough. <laughs> you know how I feel, kid. It's just as though he were my own dad. Thank you. 
you want to do my job? And you? You want to do your job? And I'm going to find the man or men that murdered my father. This is a job for the police, Kathy. It's a job I'm going to do. And you're going to help me. Lou, you're going to run a story about it. You're sure packing them in. Nothing but the finest attractions for Batis to find you. That's what you say. Oh, yeah. Look, Carlos Ross Moore. He's just another movie actor. I can't see what you women see in him. <laughs> you wouldn't understand, Marvin. Why, young Hector Jubling at the drugstore back home is a better looking man than he. But Carlo is so romantic. Every little thing he does. Orchestra signing off and saying cheerio to everyone from coast to coast. And don't forget when you're in Hollywood, come to see us at the Club Harmony where the stars come to dance. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, Hollywood's favorite host, Baptiste Stefani, has the honor of presenting the most outstanding attraction ever to visit the Sun Kiss Shores. The Rage of London, the divine Sarah of the Dance, Valerie, preceded by the Misho Ito Ballet.
lot of courage to go through with this. So did Bab, do you insist on that kind of a number? Yes. I tried my best to talk her out of it. She's dead set on going through with it. How do you like her? Terrific. That's what I think. I get a load of the boss. You could knock his eyes off with a stick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but get a load of Laura. <laughs> Boy, is she starting to burn. I don't blame Betty. I'd like to have her feather my nest. Uh, who wouldn't? But he'd better be careful about making any passes, because Laura will scratch his eyes out. Says who? She'll get just about as far as Nita did. I'll stick with the blonde. Kid, you were great. You killed him. Oh, Lou, you mustn't come here. Well, why not? This isn't the first time I've been in your dressing room. It's the first time you've been in Valerie's dressing room. And the last. Oh, for heaven's sakes, Lou. Supposing Stefani found out. I'm sorry, you're right. But look, I've got to have some excuse to hang around so I can keep my eye on things. You have to be careful he doesn't become suspicious. Don't worry, I'll find a way. Hey, is somebody corner all the flowers in town? Oh, Lou. Sure, but it's okay for the Boy Scout to send flowers. Well, I only came in to tell you I thought you were wonderful. Thanks, Lou. And I still do. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm terribly sorry. That's so stupid of me. I don't have to wait till Saturday night. Weatherman predicted showers, but whoo, I got a cloudburst. Hey, you're cute. Ah, I bet you tell that to all the boys. The ones who pour water on you. <laughs> Say, how would you like to get into pictures? Uh -huh. No pictures, thanks. I've been framed before. Yeah. You keep that up and they'll hang you, too. Oh, I see. You know all the ropes. Now, look, who started this? Uh, please, I've got to change for the oh. next number. Uh, but I'll meet you later in the cocktail lounge. That's right. You do owe me something for that free bath. Oh, I see. It never rains, but it pours. Do you have to say those things? Do you prefer dumb girl? No. No, but I'll meet you anyway. After in case you don't show up, who am I supposed to be sore at? Sore? Come on, come on. Your name. What's your name? Penny Nichols. Penny Nichols. Well, I need a little change. You go see that they get Ross more ready. 
We'll go to work after the next show. Hi, boss. And you'll bring that bird kid in here. Right. Laura, well, you'd better beat it. I know how you want to get rid of me. What's eating you? You don't want me here. Not with La Valerie around. I got business to attend to, and it's not with a woman. You heard me. I told you to go. I'll call you later. You won't forget that. Me? Not a chance, sweetheart. job in Frisco. You still got that five grand I gave him? Yeah, I socked it away. Smart kid. Ross Moore, be ready right after the show, Bapty. Okay, Bonnie. You see, kid? Everything's gonna be fixed. There's ten grand in this one for you. Hmm, bigger and better, eh? That's right. Here you go with the boys. Yes, sir. Now I'd like to present our own Penny Nichols. Penny, tell us all just what is in your heart. I'd rather look at you.
much rather look at you. Jack, we better get him home. Don't worry about it. I'll take care of him. Thanks, Come Babsy. On, so long. Good night, Carl. You know, Babsy, you're a nice fellow. Sure, sure. Stop pushing. You're all right, too. I can manage all right by myself. Sure you can. Sure you can make it okay, Carlo. I can make anything. Say, Bab... Babs. <laughs> Say, and you know you're a nice fella. Sure, sure, sure. And so are you. Thanks. I'll see you soon. You bet you will. You could make it all right. This is a fine mess. I can drive. You ran right in front of me. Come on. Come on, come on, now, Scram. Get on your way. and let no one in that door. Big shot, eh? Anything you do is all right. Look at that, you drunken idiot. How long do you think you're going to be able to go around running down people while you're drunk? It was an accident. Look at her. She's all right. Yeah, she's all right. I only hope she lasts till the doctor gets here. You got the best man you can. You've got to help her. You've got to help me. You've got to help you. I'm sick and tired of helping you guys with dough out of spot your money get you into. Don't say that, Babsy, please. We'll get her to a hospital. The best hospital, see? I mean, well, somebody's got to help me. If this thing gets out, I'm, I'm through. What are you crying about? We'll make a swell publicity story to break with your next picture. Wait a minute, Bright Eyes. You can't go in there. Say, who do you think you are? Did you ever see a press card before? Now, who's driving the big car? What big car? You know what big car. The gray one smashed up outside. Are you drunk? Yeah, I got a good start. So what? Come on, come on. Who was it? Santa Claus and his reindeers. Word. Listen, brother. If you don't want to look like a sieve, you better find yourself a wind and take off. You've got a good memory for faces. Remember mine, because you'll be seeing it again. From the inside, looking out. Go on, scram. Use the phone in my private office. Tell that mouthpiece to get down here right away. We'll wait for him. She was badly hurt. The doctor will be here in a minute. Tough break for the kid, a swell little girl. You know, I like a girl who keeps her head in a tight place and who knows when not to talk. I do my best. You and me ought to go together sometime. I just work here. Okay, okay. What's the lowdown? Who is she? Say, she looks like she's about out. 
Lou, you stay out of this. Keep this out of the papers. Who did it? Who was driving the other car? Oh, please, Lou, I ask you to stay out of this. Yeah, but the other papers will get the story. I... No, they won't. Now, this is the chance I need. The kid here will be taken care of. I promise. Oh, please go. But, Kathy... Lou, you remember what you promised. Now, if you're going to be any help at all, you've got to go. Please. They've got him in that room there. And this is the break I need to get on the inside. Okay, Kathy, you win. for you to laugh about it, young lady, but I'm telling you, you're getting yourself into something serious. Right now, you're in over your head. And I'm staying in until Stefani and his mob are behind bars. Good heavens, we're not getting anywhere. You've tried, I've tried. We both know that Ross Moore paid $60,000 to squelch the mess. Jane Beard got paid off. Now she's out of the hospital and gone without admitting a thing. Hello, Lou. Well, how are you? I guess Mother did know best. The early bird gets the worm. Or should I say the oily bird? Oh, hiya, Valerie. Uh, hiya, Valerie. Hello, Penny. Hello. What are you here from, the old country? Ignoring you, Lou. <laughs> Just in time for coffee and cigarettes. Oh, lips that touch a cigarette can never rest beneath my snoop. No, <laughs> now you see what I have to put up with. Uh-oh, sorry, Lou. Were you in again? <laughs> oh, I beg your pardon, Counselor. This is Penny Knight. Uh, uh, the future, Mrs. Fleming. Yeah, do you as do? soon as I could get a straight jacket for a bridal gown. <laughs> if I were you, I'd hold him to it, Penny. Oh, well, if he doesn't, I, I'm going to sue him. Sue me? For what? Uh, you know, um, what do they call it? Uh, a botany. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can do that, Terry. No court would ever believe that Lou was a rose. Will Villery. You have to go, Oliver. Well, I only dropped in for a moment to talk to you. Well, go right ahead. Don't let us stop you. If you ever feel as if you uh, need Sue Mr. Fleming for uh, botany, don't forget that I'm a lawyer. Oh, thank well, goodbye, Villery. Goodbye, darling. <laughs> Say, he's cute. You lay off that. That's how you got me. Oh, busy for us? Uh, Valerie wants to see you. Well, that makes it unanimous. Well, what are you waiting for? Oh, by the way, Jane Baird got to Phoenix? Yeah, I gave her the ten grand and sent Tony with her. Okay, send Valerie in. Hello, kid. Sit down. Cigarette? No, thanks. Something bothering you? Yes. Just like a dame. What is it? Married man? Oh, no. No, you see, I need some money. Well, who doesn't? Well, now, look, kid, if it's an extra hundred a week, it's okay. I'm no short sport. Oh, no. No, I need ten, fifteen thousand dollars. <whistles> you don't need money. You need a millionaire. Okay, what's the beef? The beef? What's the matter? Don't they talk English in London? I mean, what's the squawk, the trouble? Oh, well, I, I hate to tell you this. Go ahead, maybe I can help you. Well, you see, there's some trouble at home. Oh, not with the police or anything like that, but it would be a nasty mess if it got out. You see, you were right. There was a married man, only believe me, I didn't know it. And they're trying a squeeze plane, the old army game. The night you opened here, you remember, you know about the kids from the chorus? Yes. You dealt yourself in that night, but you played your cards okay. Ten thousand bucks is real dull. But if you could appreciate it in the right way, and learn to keep your trap shut, I know a guy that's just itching to give it to you. Well, believe me, Mr. Stefani. Who? Then, please. I've learned my lesson. You'll never regret it. I thought 
might find you here. Wherever you find cocktails, you'll always find reporters. Uh, why don't you stop reading those funny papers? Say, has Valerie left yet? Wait till you hear this. I just saw her leave with a boss. <laughs> Didn't take her long. You know, you always seem awfully interested in Valerie. Look, Pat, you just sit here and give your brains a rest. Oh, but they're not tired. Hello, Laura Wen. Oh, Laura, this is a friend. Ah, never mind who, it's a friend. I just thought you ought to know that Babty just took Valerie up to his Topanga Canyon house. Oh, who'd you call up? City Hall. I just wanted to see when the mayor would have a day off so he could perform a marriage ceremony. For us? Oh, won't that be cute? Oh, will I get my picture in the paper? Well, I don't know. But I'll buy you a drink first. Oh, Henry. What do you have, pet? Oh, I take anything. Give her a double anything. With a beer chaser. Darling, are you sure there's nothing worrying you? What have I got to worry about? Oh, I thought you might be afraid that I'd leave you. No. No, I'm afraid you won't. Uh, uh, always love me. Oh. I have a little deal worked out. There's ten grand in it for you. I certainly can use it. Alan Blake's got a reservation at the club Friday night after preview of his new picture. Blake always does a little private celebrating after a preview. We'll fix him up a special little drink, give him a private escort to his car. When he starts up without realizing it, he runs into Valerie. There's 10,000 smack holders in the bank, like that. But I... So you're not going to get hurt. Batiste's taking care of that. Well, it sounds like a good thing. It's perfect. You don't need to worry, Valerie. I'm taking care of you from now on. <laughs> Gee, I'm starved. Well, Laura, I was waiting until you came. Babsy said he was expecting you. Yeah, sure. I had a little supper prepared for you. Well, I guess I might as well run along now that things are settled. Good night, darling. I hope I see you soon. Yeah, I hope so, too, at the club. What about Friday night? Is it a deal? Definitely. It's a contract. So you were expecting me, were you? And why'd you tell me to go to the beach? It was so sweet, thought the air would be good for me. <laughs> you got the good out of it, and I got the air. It's business. I got a deal on with Valerie. What were you doing, holding auditions for a new cook? Well, I suppose the avocado and salads were for me. Yeah, that's right, sweetheart. I got them for you, and you can have it. Why, you... Oh! Oh! And I like a little white house with little green shutters. Say, you weren't listening. I'm sure I was. What did you say? When do we get married? Oh, that. Haven't you been able to get the mayor on the phone yet? That reminds me. I'll try him right now. Well, well, hey, I'm hungry. What do I order? Get yourself a small muzzle. Oh, say, is it good here? Uh, anything on the docket tonight, my fine feathered friend? You get it. I can't make the story. It'll probably break tomorrow night. Now, quit riding me. Tell you it'll be the biggest blackmailing story since Cleopatra put the B on Mark Antony. Okay, okay, I'll see you in the morning. After 12. What's up, Toot? Mr. Stefani, can an editor marry you? What's the matter with you? Are you nuts? Can an editor marry you? Say, what are you, a Corrine or one of the seven dwarves? He said he was calling the mayor to marry us. And then he called the editor. 
dirty old blackmail case is more important than marrying me. Come on, kid. Tell your Uncle Betsy all about it. Sit down, kid. Now, what's all this about that blackmail case? Well, he said Cleopatra was blackmailing Mark Anthony tomorrow night. But he didn't know who was behind it. Tomorrow night? Why does he have to bother with people like that when we're supposed to get married? Say, how'd you like to have me talk to this guy for you? Oh, would you? Sure, I'd be glad to. Who is he? Lou Fleming, uh, that reporter. You've seen him with me last night. Oh, that little sawed-off shrimp? He's not sawed-off. He's beautiful and handsome. Oh, yeah, that guy. Sure, I can see how any girl would go for him. Oh, I do. But sometimes I think he goes with me just so he can be near Valerie. Oh, he goes for her too, does he? Oh, I don't think he does anymore. Because she's in love with that young lawyer. A lawyer? I always say you can't be too careful with a cheap lawyer hanging around. Oh, he's not. He works for the government. <laughs> You'd like him. Yeah, I'm sure I would. Yeah, maybe he's all right at that. Oh, he's lovely. Oh, Mr. Stefani, will you please do what you can for me with Lou? Or else I'll just have to sue him for a million dollars. <laughs> yeah, I'll take good care of Lou, all right. Don't you worry. Oh, I don't know how to thank you. Find Martin and send him in here. I just found out that Valerie Dames are phony. A plant? Yeah. Tied up with some lawyer, probably from the DA's office. We'll call tomorrow night, steal off. And I want every move she makes watched from now on. And find out who that lawyer really is. She'll be covered. Tell the boys. I want to talk to her. Honey, I'm afraid we'll have to call everything off for tomorrow night. Oh? Did something happen? Yeah, I got a tip the DA's office is wise done. So perhaps we'd better wait. But how did I they... can't go into it here. I'll go to the house after you've finished work, and I'll explain then. And we won't have to worry about Laura tonight. After the show, then. And don't worry about it. No, I won't. Shut up. We brought you a present, Laura. Babby wants her kept here. It'll be a pleasure. You stay here and keep an eye on her. I'm not taking any chances. I'm going to lock the door from the outside. Then everything's under control. Check with me at 8 sharp. Okay. So long, sugar. We'll go through with Blake tonight. And Valerie, that little double-crosser, will be in it with a broken neck. She'll be all set up. Go out to the Topanga place about midnight and bring her back. Me, Laura. I can stand one of those. Help yourself. How about the boyfriend? Barney's never been known to refuse. Well, come and get it, Curly Lock. To our boyfriend, Babsy. The lady killer.
No use, Valerie. It's always the woman who pays. That's right, Laura. We end up with a broken heart. And what happens to the men? Tell me, what happens to the men? That's right, Valerie. You're always right. But what will I say to her? Don't say anything. Just call her. <laughs> You're silly. I can't do that. Now, all you have to do is call up. Ask for Laura. If she's there, Lou will prompt you. Oh, will you, Lou? Yes, yeah, sure. Come on, come on. Give me a nickel. Thanks. You come on out. No, I'm not fooling. Give you a little drinky. Honest. Oh, come on over. Sure. Hey, what's the big idea? Here, give me that. I was talking to my friend. That's all right. Love. Hey, wait a oh, minute. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> hey. Let that be a lesson to you. Oh, Everett, this is Holton. Send your men out to Blair Road off to Panga Canyon. You and Rankin better get out there, too. We've located her. And now, young lady, I'm going to put you someplace where you'll be safe. Hello, Doc. I'll need you tonight. I don't know. I haven't been able to raise the Panga place on the phone. Yeah, Martin's already on his way out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? Oh, it must be a little penny. Oh, she's a nice kid. I'll go. Oh. We figured you were up to something. Oh, there's oh. Oh. Are you dumb oh. cluck? Smart dame, but it won't do you any good. Well, it's lucky I got here. She'd have been on the lamb, and you'd have got what we gave Nita. So it was you who killed Nita Madeira. Well, what of it? Then you must have murdered Sergeant O'Connor. So what? He was a copper. Come on. I think we've got something. Grand. If there's anything you want? Call Baptist. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. See if you can get Laura again at Sepanga Canyon Place. They don't answer? Okay, they probably left. Look upstairs, Lou. Say, what's the idea of breaking in like this? Who are you? Where's Valerie? Oh, her boyfriend, huh? Where is she? <gasps> Wouldn't you like to know? Well, we just have to lock you up. She's not up there. We're going to take her along with us. Oh, there's no need to get mad. Barry went back to the club with Martin and Barney. That's all we want to know. We won't need them this time. The way they find her, a few bruises will be enough. You figured you'd be smart. I might have helped you go places, but you had to turn copper. That's the way I was brought up. A copper at heart, eh? Yes. Just like Sergeant O'Connor. What do you mean by that, Crack? She's O'Connor's daughter. And she's following him right now. Yes. With just about as much chance as he had, too. All right, boys. Hold it. I need that stuff for Blake. Oh, uh... 
Yeah, it is. Don't lose any time with Blake. Right away. We'll be ready at this end. Come on, what's this about that cop O'Connor? How'd she find out? They'll get you for it, no matter what you do to me. Shut up. Got that, Jake? The whole blackmailing racket busted wide open. Okay, now here's the topper on the story. Uh, this is also exclusive. There's going to be a wedding. The ceremony will be performed in about an hour. And the lucky couple is Mr. Oliver Holton and Miss Kathy O'Connor. Right. Sure, that's all. Oh, 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 hold it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. There's going to be a double wedding. The second couple is the beautiful, charming, and adorable Miss Penelope Nichols. And the groom, hold everything, Jake. None other than yours truly. Oh! Oh! Oh, oh darling. Oh. oh, my darling, I'm sorry. It was an accident, really. I, 